Steve's broadcasting the Lenore Lion Elon football game from Burlington Memorial Stadium. As these two old rivals get ready to renew that rivalry once again, and it's going to be a driving rainstorm that we play in here this afternoon in Burlington. The Bears 0-3, Elon 0-3, both of them 0-1 in the SAC 8 conference as they get ready to play this critical game here under adverse weather conditions. It's going to be tough, Jeff, for the Bears to get going after losing their first three games. And in the SAC 8, if you go down two games 0-2, it's awfully tough to come back. This is a critical game for Lenore Ryan. They have not beaten Elon right here at, in Burlington since 1979, and they need a road win very badly. Elon has not been able to score any points on offense. Their only touchdown of the season, Tom, was on a kickoff return. Yeah. Coach Leon Hart coming over as, for, as a, with the assistantship from Eastern Kentucky, head coach here for the first year. He was in charge of the offensive backfield and wide receivers at Eastern Kentucky, an NCAA 1-2A powerhouse going into the playoffs uh, several years. Comes over to hope to get Elon's offense on the board. Like you say, they've only scored a touchdown, and that was on a kickoff return. Their offense has not had that much punch. Well, the Bears hoping to have a good defensive performance today under adverse weather conditions. Elon hoping to find some offense. We'll find out what happens when our coverage of this afternoon's game continues on Catawba Valley Cable TV. Old ages. Mallard approaches the football, and Norfleet, who has the only Elon touchdown of the season, will get it at the 9. 20, 25. The Bears slow him up and drop him at about the 28-yard line, and Elon will start from there. First and 10 yards to go. Paige Inge is the quarterback for this ball club, the Elon Fighting Christians. There's another famous name that's uh, in the skill positions. Casey Bethard is the split end, number 23. He's the son of Bobby Bethard, the now retired uh, Washington Redskins general manager. The backfield is going to be Phil Marion and Bobby Johnson as they get ready to go here on Tracy Murphy going to start at the uh, uh, running back position instead number 24 so Elon will go on first down and 10 they put Jeff Davis in motion to the other side and now line him up there the quarterback Inge fumbles the snap controls it ball still loose and the Bears may have a break if they haven't ruled Inge down on the play as uh, it is going to be marked down and it'll be no gain on the play uh, back at the about the 29 yard line it'll be second down Wait a minute. Tom, you explained that you're looking at the monitor. Did you have a chance to see that play developed very bad. It started bad. The quarterback fumbled the ball. It looked like Inge when he, Inge when he went up into the line of scrimmage, lost it again. Why is it still first down, Juju? They, I don't know. It's still, it's first and ten. So I guess that play, Jeff, just they wiped it off the board. They're ruling no play there. We'll have to get that explained to us a little bit. On this play from scrimmage, Mark Jennings is the running back, and Jennings pushes it forward against the Lenore Ryan defense over the 30, out to the 32-yard line. It's going to be wet, it's going to be muddy, and it's going to be uh, an interesting afternoon. These teams are going to try to establish some type of running pattern. Let's set the defense for Lenore Ryan at nose tackle Scott Henry, number 90, Richie Jones, number 56, and also Mike Cohey, number 76, at tackle defensive ends Ben Fouts, number 84, and Todd Hegler, Number nine, the front line will set the rest of it for you in a second. Out of the I formation, Inge with a short drop wanting to throw to the sidelines, and it's going to be caught by Bethard. Bethard's got the first down as he comes over the uh, 35 out near the 40-yard line. It was Dave McCall of the Lenoreine defense that knocked him out of bounds over there, and it will bring up a first down for Elon. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line. First first down of the football game. In passing this year, Inge has completed 24 of 56 passes, 318 yards, no touchdowns, but one interception. Jeff, they don't like to throw the ball deep. They're more of a possession-type passing team. First and 10 at the Elon 40-yard line. They give to the fullback, and there the Bear defense slowly struggles into the ground. That's Scott Henry, Charlie Wallace, the primary tacklers in on the play. And that is not a penalty flag down there. That's somebody that uh, is picking up a towel out there. It's going to be wet this afternoon. Now the officials stop play for just a moment. We've got a uh, player shaking up on the play. Appears to be one of the Bears. I call it the I believe, Jeff. The Bears secondary, gentlemen, is racked up this week. A couple of changes. Bobby Page not starting this afternoon. Uh, McCall, Jeff mentioned, Dave McCall, a sophomore, playing in his place at cornerback. And... The Bears will be without a couple of other players on offense. Randolph Bowers starting tailback and starting wide receiver Kenny Jones. Both have been suspended from the football team for one week because of dis disciplinary actions. 
The Bears are going to have to use some new faces this afternoon, especially on defense. So Oglesby coming off the field, and that doesn't look good, Tom, as he's moving a little bit under his own power, but he may not be back for a while. They're going to have to work on him on the sideline. Second down at seven, mark it at the 44-yard line of uh, Elon. Just underway, 13 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Hinge, the quarterback, going to give it to the tailback. That's Tracy Murphy. And Murphy pushes his way over the 45 against the Bear defense out to the 47-yard line. And Bobby Page back in there starting left cornerback for Lenore Ryan. At linebackers, Toby Bratton, Charlie Wallace. Wallace, the senior out of Pennsylvania. Bratton, the junior out of Hunter Hutt High School. And at cornerbacks, you heard it, uh, Bobby Page, and along with Dave McCall and the safeties, Terrence Mungro and Sean Wagner. Marcus, while normally the starter, still having some problems with the knee. And expect to hear Marcus Haywood in there some this afternoon because of the lack of depth the Bears have. They may be playing that freshman. Here's the pitch. Murphy, the head of steam, has the first down in Lenore Ryan territory as he crosses the 50-yard line at the Bear 48. I think uh, Kohe, one of the tacklers, in on the play along with Bratton, and it'll bring up uh, a first and 10 for Elon, their second first down of the football game. Elon's not, a, not had a whole lot of success on offense all season long. And uh, here in this first possession of the afternoon, they're trying to establish something. They've only averaged 255 yards a game on offense so far for three games. And Johnson, their tailback, number 24, leading rusher on the season, only with 125 yards for the entire year. Here's the running play. This time they give it to Murphy running out of that tailback slot, and he's down to the 45-yard line. It was Todd Hegler on the defense for Lenore I. Market at the 45, it'll be second down and about eight, uh, eight yard, uh, seven yards to go for the Bears. Elon's offense, you guys, gentlemen, have mentioned that they have not scored a touchdown this year. This will give them a lot of confidence, get it on their first drive and move the football down against the Bear defense. And even Elon on the season, Jeff, in the first quarter have been outplayed. They've been outscored 14 to nothing. Second down and seven. They're going to pitch it back to Murphy. He's been their workout horse so far. We've got a flag on the play as Murphy's tackled at about the 40-yard line. And, Tom, we may have a holding call coming up against Mark Jennings, uh, who was uh, leading some of the blocking there for Elon. I believe that's the call. That's the indication that the official gave. So the officials will come and uh, talk to Todd Hagler, one of the better uh, defensive players, about the penalty. And I think Lenore Ryan obviously will accept this one to move the Christians back on the other side of the 50-yard line. The Bears are in white, and you're going to see that white disappear awfully quickly. You can see some of the Bear linemen are ready with the mud on them. Uh, Lenore Ryan's had problems this year, gentlemen, start stopping the sweep. The linebackers have especially gotten caught up inside. And the Bear linebackers are going to have to play a little better because Elon, no doubt, are going to try to exploit that after watching Presbyterian last week, the game film. So Elon with now second down and about 14 yards to go. Inge wanting to throw to Bethard on the sidelines, overthrows him, and it'll be incomplete, and the Christians will be looking at third and long. And let's see, third and about 15, 16 yards to go. New quarterback in for the Fighting Christians, John Wadsworth, the senior. Number six, 5'11", 165 pounds. Wadsworth out of Moorhead City, North Carolina. Paige Inge was in there, Jeff. They changed it around. I believe Wadsworth, maybe because of his experience, that he'd on offense, not moving the ball this year. They've gone a change. Third and about 16. And this is Wadsworth on the delay to Murphy. Murphy's got uh, over the inside the 45, down to about the 43-yard line, but not enough for a first down. Elon will have to punt it away. And in the NAIA statistics, the only nationally ranked player that Elon has, Tom, is Tim Colchin, the punter. He's punted 22 <laughs> times in three football games. He's already lettered, Jeff. <laughs> he has averaged uh, slightly over 40 yards a punt. They're punting from the 43-yard line. Colchin with a Lenorine sending only one man back to receive his punt, and that's Scott Walker. Gets a pretty good snap on this wet field, and he hits a... Pretty good kick that will be going toward the coffin corner, and Elon's going to get their wish. It's out of bounds at the nine-yard line. The Bears will have possession first and ten after stopping Elon 
on this first possession of the football game with 10.22 to go in the first quarter. Lenorine's got it at their nine. On offense for the Bears, the center Steve Swope, two guards Melvin Truitt and Wesley Pope at tackles. We're looking to see Steve Davidson in there as well as Greg Autry, number 73, a sophomore tight end. Should be Kevin Gilmore. He is in there. It is Scott Walker and Jody Hatley, wide receivers. Sam Wells and Walter Greer at the running backs. And, of course, Lauren Dean, a quarterback. And this is Wells, and Sam's going to be tripped up and dropped right about the line of scrimmage. He might have got to the 10-yard line. Not uh, much more than that. Defensively, it was uh, Herring that made the tackle for uh, Elon that time, or the lead tackler on the play, Steve Herring. And it'll be second down, and let's call it nine for Lenore Ryan at the 10-yard line. So I wonder how long those white uh, uniforms that the Bears have on are, are going to stay that way. Not long, not long. A couple downfield blocks, especially interior linemen. They're going to be muddy in a hurry. Pitch to well. Sam with a little bit of blocking wedges it out to about the 13-yard line. Elon has been tough to run against so far this season. Their rushing defense has been giving up 178 yards per game on the season. And that is especially impressive considering they played a Carson Newman team that you mentioned, Jeff, that was averaging about 300 yards, over 300 yards a game rushing and 30 points a game. I was talking to Joe Smith earlier in the week, and the 17 points that Carson Newman had, they got 10 of those late in the ball game. Yeah, and one of them on a long interception return. So here's third and about six for the Bears from their own 13-yard line. Lauren Dean, play action fake, Tommy wanting to throw, looking deep over the middle. Walker's got it for first down yardage in the foot. Oh, good block. On. He may go all the way. Now they'll catch him and drop him inside the 35 of Elon. Walker with a real reaching catch and a great block that freed him up uh, at about the 35-yard line, and then it was a foot brace, gentlemen. Found the seam and hit him perfectly. The only place he could throw it and have a reception was right where he put it. It was up high, and Scotty came down, and somebody made a nice crackback block along the far side over there that sprung Scotty again, and that was a pickup of about 38, 40 yards on that time and a good third down conversion. The Bears do that quite effectively. That's his 14th catch of the season. Here's Walter Greer trying to pick you hole and get inside the 30 down to the 28-yard uh, line. So the Bears with a scoring threat on their first possession of the afternoon. Scotty Walker averaging about 25 yards a catch. That's going to bring it up, Jeff. And, and again, Lenore Ryan on their first possession this year, they have scored twice. Both times they went on to lose. Last year was just the opposite. Might be a bad omen if the Bears go in to score then. We'll see. As it's marked at the 28-yard line, it'll be second down and about five from there. Almost midway in the first quarter, eight minutes and nine seconds, and the clock moving along. Lauren Dean with Greer, the only setback. Walter gets the call. He had a great night running uh, the ball last Saturday night at the Moret Stadium. He's inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line, and the Bears will be looking at third and about a yard. Orlando Washington made the tackle for Elon. And they move him around. He works in the line and as a linebacker. They moved a lot of players around on defense this year. They, with the new coach, they're just trying to find the right combination. Wells in there at tailback behind Greer. Receivers to each side of the field, and they're going to give straight ahead to Greer, and he muscles it up in there. I'm not sure if he's got the first down or not. At about the 22-yard line, it would appear that he does and the official gives us the signal that it is Lenorine's first down. So the Bears keep their possession alive and have a fresh set of downs at the Elon 21-yard line. A couple of substitutions in now. John Cook at fullback, and J Jody Hatley comes in at wide receiver. Walter Revere goes out maybe to wipe some of that mud off his helmet. Lauren Dean on first down at the Elon 21-yard line. Going to pitch back to Well. Sam... Started to go outside and then cut it up inside and got inside the 20 down to about the 17-yard line. Running very much under control. Did not try to make any sharp cuts or any steps. Just sort of tippy-toe on his way till he saw the seam and then tried to hit it. So the Bears will be looking at second and six. And aside from the pass to Walker, we haven't seen any passes in this possession. The Bears have been able to run the ball about as well as they've wanted to so far. But it was the big pass play that certainly got them where they're at. We see four potential receivers this time for Lenore Ryan. All man to man. Only one setback, and that's Cook. And here's the pass 
going to be caught by Damon, and then he's hit at about the 11-yard line, close to the 10. Let's see if he's got enough for the first down. The official spot is around the 10. It would appear be to be enough for the first down for Lenore Ryan. The chain crew thinks so. They're trying to move. <laughs> Good protection for Tommy Laurentine. He's had that all year. And let us say it right now, the Laurentine quarantine has been in effect. Thank you, Juju. Where does he come up with this stuff? It is first if down. He, if he could read, I think he's getting out of a book somewhere. <laughs> it is first down and 10 yards to go for Lenore Ryan. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. The pitch back to well. Sam going to be knocked out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Good defensive pursuit by Elon, but the Bears are threatening on their first possession with 544 to go. It was Daryl Humbles that knocked him out of bounds. Walter Greer made a fine block from his fullback position. We said that several times last week. Margaret at the eight yard line. With well, the guys having some tough times trying to get their feet from under them and you can tell Tom mentioned more controlled running. Sam Wells likes to go to the corner, but he's he's a little bit slower on this turf, which has really pretty much been chewed up already here this afternoon. Second and goal from about the seven. A little play action fake. Lauren Dean looking, throwing back the other way, overthrows Damon out of the end zone. Good Tom, decision. I, I think he just threw it away on purpose, don't you? Good decision. Elon had all the receivers pretty well covered with it, at least one step of them. So the incomplete pass stops the clock with 5.38 to go in the first quarter. Lenore Ryan, this possession started at their own nine-yard line. Now third down and goal to go from the Elon seven-yard line. It'd be a shame not to come up with some points on this possession. Jody Hatley back in the ballgame at a wide out. Greer in the only setback, and Lauren Dean wanting to throw. Tommy with time, loops it over Gilmore's head. He can't get it. We're going to be looking at fourth down, and Jason Mundy and the kicking team is going to come onto the field. The freshman out of uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, on the season in uh, kicking. Some pretty impressive statistics for a freshman. Indeed, Jeff. He has had to find games until last week when he had a couple of his kicks blocked. He's the leading scorer, obviously, for the Bears with 21 points, has hit Field goals four of seven on the season. So Monday will try a 25-yard field goal. Roop will do the holding, and it'll be from the right hash mark. He's a soccer-style kicker, a clean spot. The kick's on the way, and it's good. Lenore Ryan with 5.27 to go in the first quarter leads by a score of three to nothing. Lenore Ryan Football 89 is a presentation of Catawba Valley Cable TV. Hello, I'm Tom Watson, your host for the sixth season of Catawba Valley Sports Roundup here on Catawba Valley Cable TV. Join us each week for the best football coverage in the Catawba Valley area. We'll talk with the coaches about their Friday night contests and about upcoming games. There will also be exclusive highlights of your favorite team on our game of the week. We'll also check in with head coach John Perry of the Lenore Ryan Bears on Lenore Ryan lineup. So join me every Saturday morning at 11 or Monday evening at 6 for Catawba Valley Sports Roundup, only on Cable Channel 3. Over the middle, behind his intended receiver, Bethard, and it's incomplete, and Elon will be looking at a fourth down situation once again. Sean Wagner there on the coverage for Lenore Ryan, and Tom Colson coming on for his 24th punt of the season. You go, you go keep up with him throughout the season, keep track Jeff. Of that. That's 22 punts in three ball games is a lot of kicking. I tell you what, Jeff has something for punters. Last year he fell in love with Wingett's punter. This year it's going to be Elon's punter. Colton with a pretty good average, a little over 40 yards a, a kick. LR sitting 10 people on the line of scrimmage, and they snap it over his head. Here's the foot race after the football. It's going to be, if they give safety. you a safety, Colton will be tackled in the end zone for a safety, and Lenorine's got a 5-0 lead. The Bears are pitching a 5-0 shutout here in the first quarter. It is Bobby Page that tackled Colton in the end zone, and Tom, when he snapped it over his head, it was good night nurse. The My foot race was on. Smart play, though, by the punter. Not trying to do anything fancy. He just wanted to catch on and hold on to the football, and he did. The Bears will get a big break on the special teams. And again, Jeff, you're talking about uh, one of the problems, the Bear defense. They've been giving up a lot of yards rushing, but the teams have not passed the football against Lenore Ryan. Obviously, why have so much success and change to go up, up top? But the Bear defense has, has not registered a sack this year. So that's a question mark, but just a good heads-up play that time by the Elon punter 
saving what could have been a disastrous play, put Lenore line up another touchdown. As it is, Elon's still in it at five nothing. So it sounds like we're pitching a five nothing shutout in baseball, but it's a touchdown and a field goal. One of those unusual football scores that you see. That uh, punter might have been back there a little quicker, Jeff, but he's a little leg weary from trotting out on that field 24 times <laughs> in three ball games. So it's had its advantages and beginning to pay off here for Lenore Ryan this afternoon. Well, Colch, it won't have to worry about them coming after him this time. He'll have a free kick from his own 20 yard line. And the Bears have Page, Wells, and Walker deep at about their own 30 yard line up field. So Lenore Ryan with a 5 0 lead here with 3.50 to go in the what's starting out to be a strange first quarter. Colchin, boy, isn't that boy, pretty? Not, Turn the that nose one. of that one over. At the 24 yard line is Walker. They got a wall right wall. now. He's to the 50, only one, one man, man to beat, and that's the punter. Walker down the far sidelines, and Colchin saved the touchdown at the 26 yard line. Great camera work by Gordon Beckton on our TV side. and. And again, it came right at us, and that wall just broke open. A perfect seam. And again, I think the kicker, Colton, had a great angle on uh, Walker and was just able to push him out of bounds. If he had to cut back, there were a couple of other Elon players coming down the field. But again, sets Bears up in pretty good shop at the 26-yard line. Uh, Go ahead, Tom. A dry field, he may have tried to cut back, but yeah. I believe he just took the lesser of the evils. Basically, what happened there was Colton outkicked his coverage, and Walker took advantage of it with a great return as the Bears start at the 26-yard line, leading 5-0 late in the first quarter. Lauren Dean going to pitch it back to Well. Sam cuts it back against the grain, and it'll be dropped at about the 23-yard line. It was Chris Holly, one of the linebackers for Eli to 7. Where? Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter, and the Bears are up 5 nothing. A couple of new substitutions in as Sam Wells goes out, and again, Randolph Bowers will not play the starting tailback tonight for the Bears. It is Dennis Eccles at tailback number 33. Damon and Walker go wide to the left side. Eccles with the clean jersey behind Greer. Lauren Dean hadn't got dirty yet either. This is Eccles on a delay, and they were waiting for him. Lost the yard back to the 24-yard line. A flag after the play is over, and we'll let the officials sort it all out. And Eccles gets up limping a little bit. He had a bad ankle last year. And the Bears are very thin at tailback. Pounds against Elon. And it'll be clipping on the defensive team. I saw a defensive clipping penalty last night in a high school game, and I don't know that I've ever seen it called before, Tom, but we've seen it. Too. It's almost like I would guess an unsportsmanlike conduct. I guess when the play's over and the back is coming back to the huddle, you push him from behind. This happened up in the line, Juju. I saw where, it, where he threw the flag. It was all Elon. I didn't see anybody from an O-Ryan standing there. I don't know what. Bears get a first down at the 14 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Umpire called it, and he stands right behind the defensive line. Lenore Ryan with a 5 0 lead on a field goal and a safety. Isn't that strange? 2.44 to go in the first quarter. The Bears off to a good start, hoping to improve here as they have first down at the Elon 14 yard line. Greer, a good opening. Walter inside the 10, down to about the 8 yard line. And he picks up about half of the distance they need for the first down. Two and a half to go in the first quarter, and the Bear running attack has been effective. Greer continues to run the ball up inside, and Walter's not one of those typical fullbacks, the big bruiser types, but he does run the trap quite well, and he's able to pick his hole. And the way that field is, Walter might be able to take advantage of that because the field is kind of, uh, I don't know, contagious to the way he likes to run the football. The sack eight had three runners in the top five in rushing in the uh, national statistics this week. Greer, running for the Bears this time, gets it to the seven-yard line, perhaps. Steve Holloman was the tackler for uh, Elon on the play. Parsley, the young man we saw last week from Presbyterian, now leading the nation in rushing. And we'll be seeing Robert Thomas of Carson Newman in a week or so, and Daryl Middleton, Middleton of Gardner Webb, who we'll see next Saturday, also in the top five. That says something about the offensive firepower of the sack eight, I think, gentlemen. Three rushers in the top five in the nation. Cook in there at fullback now. I think he's going to lead the blocking for well. Sam trying to get outside. Oh. A good defensive play by Elon that time. Wesley Pope on a trap block leading the way. If he could have just had enough footing to cut back in behind Pope, he may have been in the end zone. Kevin Alderman makes the tackle, and Lenore Ryan 
may be thinking uh, about taking a timeout here to talk over the situation, but no, the Bears instead are going to line up Monday for the field goal. Spot it from the left hash mark. Another 25-yard field goal attempt coming. And believe me, the holder's there. He's right behind the light pole. <laughs> as the kick is on the way, and it is high enough, it's long enough, but he's wide to the left side. So Elon perhaps gets a break. The Christians trail 5-0 as they return to action here at Memorial. He has been out the last week or so with a problem with his right knee. He's replacing Sean Wagner in the Bear defense again. Playing a little bit better so far this afternoon. They have not given up the big play, gentlemen, knock on wood. Both teams looking for their first win of the season and first win in the sack eight. And Elon trailing 5 nothing has a first down at their own 45-yard line. Wadsworth with a pair of running backs behind him. Norfleet for the fourth play in a row. Leaps over one tackler. That was Hagler. And then the Bears cover him at about the 46-yard line. Bratton and Marcus Wall make the tackle for Lenore Ryan. Lenore Ryan got some good play up front. All the defensive line, good penetration, forced Norfleet outside before a couple of his fellow players came up to push him out of bounds. And again, a good sign for the Bear defense is doing well. Elon coming up on second down has had second and eight, second and seven. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen second and three, second and four. Elon looking at second and nine from their own 46 yards line. They got receivers, one to, each, one, to, one to each side, and now the backs line up behind Wadsworth. He's rolling to the left, may run with it instead, and now the Bears hem him up and drop him at about the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pursuit by Lenore Ryan that time, as it was Cohe, one of the primary tacklers in on the play, along with Ricky Jones. Yeah, you know, Elon that time pulled both guards to the right side of the field and left the quarterback more or less bootlegging in by himself. By himself. He was out there by himself looking for a receiver. Fine job by Rich Jones to stay over there and contain. Well, in a field like this when it's this wet and you roll out, you really cut yourself, you limit yourself of moving the pocket because you get stuck over there and you can't cut back because the field's so bad. You want? I would guess you'd want to stay in the middle of the field, drop back pass. Delay to Norfleet. He's going to be dropped short of the 50-yard line, a flag down on the play. I believe number 80 of uh, man, it was in motion, came to the line of scrimmage too quick, Jeff. I thought you you made the correct analysis there. I was getting ready to say that myself. James Jones was the young man that was in motion. I think he turned up too quick, Tom. As it'll be third down. Well, wait a minute. Let's see if the Bears illegal motion refuse. That's, I think that's the proper decision there for Lenore Ryan. It's third and long now for Elon. How many punts now has Elon's punter had? Well, he's got one more down. No, it's fourth down. I beg your pardon. This will be, well, he, he didn't get the punt last time, Tom, so this will be the 24th punt. I was going to ask you if he goes down in minus yardage on a missed snap like that on the punter. I don't know if he Good gets question. credit for the negative yardage. They ought to give it to the center. He's the one that snapped it over his head. See, the Bears try to put some pressure on. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Colton standing at his own 35-yard line. Gets a better snap this time, and he gets off a pretty good punt under the circumstances. Walker at the 14. Oops. Well, yes. Yeah. Where did he get through there? And it's over the 20 out to about the 24-yard line. He made about 10 yards that time, Tom, and really didn't have a right to get it. Yes, if Tommy just a quarterback sneak right behind Swope, he'd pick it up. Yeah. Look for him to stutter his count, perhaps. He will sneak it. <laughs> I, I don't know if he's got it or not, as he appears to have enough Please. about the you can get your entry fee and more about it by calling the Piedmont Education Foundation at 322-7550 for that Bear Memorial Golf Tournament. Mark it at the 17-yard line. Elon sends Murphy up the middle over the 20 out to about the 24-yard line. A good gain on first down for them. Elon had to practically rebuild this offensive unit, Tom. Nine of their 11 starters from last year are gone, and that's tough. You have to rebuild. I was reading in the Elon brochure before the game started, they had two offensive linemen, the interior linemen returning. And one of their players that they did lose, Dwayne Clark, number 35, great running back, now playing for the Charlotte Barons of the uh, minor league football system. Jennings and Murphy behind Wadsworth. They're going to fake to the fullback. Here's the pass down the sideline. Flag on the play as Davis, the intended receiver, may have been interfered with by Bobby Pay. They would appear to be a little bumping though, going down the sidelines. Elon will get a first down out of this. That's the type of play that could give them a little momentum. They've not had a whole lot 
go well for them here in the first half this afternoon. And the penalty being marked off. They'll mark it at the 38 yard line. Another clean jersey in on defense, Josh Godfrey, sophomore out of Statesville. Number 75. And we got number eight, Paige Inge back in at quarterback. Eight and six keep rotating on us. Inge back in there now. And he's going to give it to Murphy. Murphy, 40, breaks the tackle, 45 out to the 47 yard line. They're going to down him at the 46 yard line. The Elon players trying to exhort the Christian faithful here to get behind their ball club. Number 84, Ben Faust took on the interference that time of blocking coming out and the play cut inside of him. He turned and chased it down from behind going upfield. Now the Bears have dominated the field position, had a chance really to score another touchdown after great field position set up on a uh, on a turnover. But Lenore Ryan failed. It is five to nothing. Elon's offense, Jeff, so far consisting primarily of running the football between the tackles. Second and short, Eli's going to try to gamble here as ends running and going to be tripped up and dropped on a good play by Godfrey of Lenore Ryan, who fought off his blocker and then was there to make the play. Seemed to have enough time to throw it, but the receivers downfield were well covered. The Bears have not had a quarterback sack this year. A lot of time that time for ends, but better play in the Bears secondary to cover up the receivers. Mark it at the 47. It'll be third and a yard as we're down to the four and a half minute mark to go in the first half of play. Lenore Ryan still holding a five nothing lead. The Bears got a field goal on their first possession and then Elon snapped it over the punter's head. He ran back and downed it in the end zone for the safety. And the Bears have that three nothing or five nothing lead now. Here's third in the yard. Murphy first down as he dives to the 50 yard line and the Christians keep their possession alive. That formation right there is what I expected out of Elon coming into today's game. I didn't know what Coach Hart was going to do, but traditionally, Elon has been real big up front and had a strong running back to run a lot of power eye. And as wet as the field is today, just to run straight at it. You don't have to worry about cutting or finesse. They can do that as long as they stay within a touchdown and stay close. If Lenore Ryan ever manages to get ahead and force the fighting Christians to throw the football, I think that's playing into Lenore Ryan's hands. Steady drizzle still falling here at Memorial Stadium in Burlington. It's first down for Elon at the 49. Murphy going to come student body right. He's got over the 45 down to the 44 yard line of Lenore Ryan. Bratton got some help from Scott Henry that time. I tell you fellas, by the time the third quarter's over, it's going to be hard to tell who made what out there. These jerseys are going to be pretty well wiped out. This is a typical Elon drive, just very boring, but solid football. And they have a tradition of winning here, which has sort of slid away from them in the last year or two, and they're trying to build it back under their new coach, uh, Mr. Hart. Here's the uh, Murphy going to the left side. Breaks a tackle, still on his feet. He's going to have the first down and a little more, about the 38-yard line for the Fighting Christian. You saw that time in your screen, number 73, the right tackle pulled on that play. Chapman, 315-pound senior, six foot seven. All three of us could run behind him. Murphy, a true freshman, Tom, out of Newburn, North Carolina, has done a pretty good job here uh, this afternoon. Averaging seven yards a carry coming into the game, and he's pretty close to that right now. 2.40 and the clock moving along here in the first half. It's first down for Elon at the bare 38-yard line. Inge the quarterback with receivers to each side wanting to throw. Looking, has some protection downfield, going to be caught by Bethard. It's close to first down yardage at about the 29 yard line. Bethard now with had eight catches coming into the game. I think he caught one other. That should be about 10 on the season for him now. They just sent Bethard on a deep square out, coming back to the football about 10, uh, now nine yards. And again, Bears did not get very much pressure on the quarterback who had a lot of time to throw it. Elon still hasn't scored a touchdown. Their offense hasn't scored a touchdown and we're approaching uh, the two and a half minute mark to halftime. They haven't scored a touchdown in almost three and a half games now. Here's Murphy, gonna be hit and dropped by the Baron defense after he got a yard or two to about the 27 yard line. It was Scott Henry who's doing a good job for the Bears interior defensive front that made the tackle. Henry's having probably his best game of the season. He's probably as healthy as he's been all year and coming into the game. Scott has only had 14 tackles. He's 
he's up there. I would have say he's five or seven, eight tackles. I wouldn't be surprised if some of his family's here. We're about halfway to Beaufort. And uh, I got a feeling they probably made the trip to Burlington today. Bur Beaufort down in Carteret County. Here's Murphy inside the 20-yard uh, line to the 19. Will be close to what they need for a first down. And Elon here in this possession that started at their own 17-yard line. We're down to a minute 45 to go in the first half. They've moved it from there, their own 17, down to the bare 19-yard line. Elon took the ball in the 17, and they've been playing football ever since. That's the way John Madden likes to play football, down in the mud, with the mud hanging from your uh, face mask. In the dirt. That's where it's supposed to be played. Field is taking a beating. This is... Uh, community high school field. Ooh. There's the hit by uh, Lenore Ryan's uh, Scott Henry as uh, Murphy knocked off his feet as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard back to the 20 that time. Elon looking at third and about two now. Scott Henry's wanting that football. He came down with the tackle. We got a timeout with the score. Lenore Ryan five, Elon nothing. This is Lenore Ryan football. Take one of their players, one of those acts that we saw a couple of weeks ago against Wofford. Maybe not. One of their players may have been hurt. Number 58, one of the line, interior linemen, Lewis Walker, a senior, 240 pounds. Good-looking drive again by the Fighting Christians, keeping the ball between tackles. Less than a minute to go in the first half. Inge will bring him up to the line of scrimmage. Pass sideline, going to be caught, and then a tackle made immediately by Lenore Ryan at about the five-yard line. Bethard made the catch over there, as it will be the... Dave McCall of Lenore Ryan that made the tackle and Elon will have first down and goal to go from the six yard line and this Elon unit that hadn't scored a touchdown all season with 41 seconds to go has got first and goal to go from the six yard line here in the first half. Clean clean jersey Tracy Coulter coming in at a defensive end. Number 45. Thank you Juju. <laughs> He's easy to spot. He's the only clean one out there on the bare defense. Here's the running play to Norfleet, and he pushes it into about the three-yard line, where it was Bratton and Wallace that make the tackle for Lenore Ryan. Elon will take a timeout. Elon with second down and goal to go from the four-yard line. 33 seconds to go in the first half. Everybody in tight for the Fighting Christians. They've got three guys in the backfield. They're going to pitch to uh, Norfleet, and he's strung out over there. It's Dave McCall and Toby Bratton that team together to make the tackle and let's hold it right here as Elon takes their last time out of the half with 23 seconds to go. So little, he's gonna drop back to throw into the end zone, incomplete, but we're gonna get past interference against Lenore Ryan. Bobby Page is the young man who they're gonna call the penalty on. Jeff Davis was the intended receiver and Elon will get a first down, but perhaps more importantly, Tom, there are only 18 seconds now left in the half. So they got plenty of plays, but they don't have plenty of time. Well, you can probably throw the ball at least twice, maybe three times with 18 seconds. Pass interference against Lenore Ryan. First down for Elon, and you see the ball spotted right there at the two-yard line. What you got to do as a quarterback now is take that snap, uh, drop back, and your primary receiver, you've got to throw it to him or either throw it over him to stop the clock. Here comes Elon up to the line of scrimmage. Everybody in tight. Inge calling signals. Norfleet might have been in motion. He tries to go over the top, and he's not into the end zone. He's down to the one-half foot line. Elon doesn't have any timeouts. Only seconds remaining. They may not get a chance to get the field goal off. Down to three two, one, that's the half. Elon cannot get the playoff. There's where they made a mistake in running the ball right there on that play, Tom. Yeah, you, one running play, you need at least 30 seconds to run and get a field goal unit out there on the field, and then you're pushing it. I'm Especially sure. if there's a big pile up like there was on that one where they have to separate them and spot the ball. The Elon offensive coach has got to be talking to themselves right now. They did not give themselves an opportunity to score. Well, you make a decision. Do you let Norfleet, who is we saw in the first half, being able to jump over the pile? You take a chance. You either let him do it or some type of rollout. They rolled the dice. This time it came up snake eyes. And that was a drive that started at the 17 and ended at the one-yard line with time running out. The Bears, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and the Bears might have been lucky right there. Elon leaves the field with no points, and the Bears have a 5 nothing lead at the end of the first half. Yeah, the Bear defense says uh, one Elon drive came up short when they were third and long, and they ran a draw play, and the 
running back came up to make a cut and fell down short of the first down and then the other one was uh, drive was stopped because of a, a long penalty and then that one because of the clock if you want to look at some of the uh, intangibles that's one of the the little things or the lucky things that Lenore Ryan had going for them last year maybe it surfaced this afternoon maybe that's a sign for the future halftime is here the Bears have a five nothing halftime lead this is Lenore Ryan football on Catawba Valley cable TV That's being called a little bit closer in uh, college and high school football this year. I don't know any closer, but just more frequent. We're going to need some windshield wipers out here on our uh, windows in front of the press box if it keeps raining like it is. Pretty steady downpour here in Burlington this afternoon. And again, Elon will kick off again from the 30-yard line. The Bears are going to get appear to get good field position. Scott Walker back there with Sam Wells. Neither team had much offense in that first half, but the man to bring you tonight's for this afternoon's second half action, the voice of Lenore Ryan College football's Bears and the man who loves brownies, Mr. Jeff Joyne. As Rutledge will approach the football once again, not near as deep as the previous kick, going to be short. One of the up people for the Bears is going to make the return and look out. Here we go down the far sideline. That's Walter Greer with a great return inside the Elon 40. And they're going to run him out of bounds in the vicinity of the uh, 37 yard line of Elon and the Bears have great field position to start the second half of the football game. And Walter didn't even wait a second for his blockers. He just ran, looked for the hole. And again, a good pickup by Walter. No one touched him until he got down near the 40 yard line. So mark it at the 37 yard line. That penalty really hurt Elon fellas. That made uh, about a 40 yard difference in field position for Lenore Ryan. Lauren Dean. Pass to Walker. He bobbles it, keeps hold of it, breaks the tackle inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. What a great catch by Walker, who had trouble getting a hold of it. And then once he did, he got up ahead of steam. Number 88, Rex Harrison in the ball game. Number seven in the eight, Dave Betson in there. Both gentlemen have clean jerseys on. So the Bears have it at the 24-yard line. It will be a first down for Lenore Ryan at that point. Lauren Dean has receivers one to each side. Well slipped. Lauren Dean didn't hand off to him, and there's flags down as he's dropped back at the 30-yard line. It looked like he was going to hand it off to Well as Well slipped. I think Tommy pulled it away from him. Elon may be offsides on the play. That's the penalty as the officials give us the signal here at Memorial Stadium. You saw number 91, Jack Duvall, defensive end, a sophomore, 6'5", out of uh, Saluda, North Carolina. Saluda, Dolly. So the penalty against Elon will move it down to the 19-yard line. The Bears holding a 5-0 lead with 4.15 to go in the, or 14.15, I should say, to go in the third quarter of the football game. And here's first and five at the Elon 19-yard line. And the lights are on at Burlington Memorial Stadium. We need them. It's getting dark here. Here's the pitch back to Wells. Sam trying to pick his way. Might have got a yard to the 18-yard line. Not much more than that. He had 11 yards on seven carries in the first half. Orlando Washington made the tackle. And it's down to the... Well, let's leave it at the 19. They gave him a rather unfavorable spot, Tom. I thought he was a little farther upfield than that. Be second and five once again. And the fog appears to be rolling in. Either the fog maybe has hit the windows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad we're inside where it's dry. As the bear is looking at second and five, Lauren Dean backs out of there. Has protection, sideline, going to be caught, then fumbled out of bounds by Walker. It will be enough for a first down, or check that, that's Damon number one over there that made the reception for Lenore Ryan, and it will be credited with a reception. He'll get a few extra yards on the fumble, and the Bears are going to have first and goal to go inside the 10-yard line. Craig in for uh, Kenny Jones, who has been suspended for one game for disciplinary problems. Damon is only his second catch of the season. Mark it inside the 10-yard line. It is first and goal to go for Lenore Ryan. Whoa, fumble. Ardeen, that ball popped out of there. The officials and Elon uh, are gathering around. Elon thinks they've got possession of the football. And they're going to signal second down. So somebody for Lenore Ryan's on the bottom of that pile. 
Looks like like Walter Greer, number 32. He was the young man who was uh, intended to receive the handoff, and Chris Holly of Elon was the guy that may have for forced the fumble, as it will be uh, Lenore Ryan recovering. 12 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Bears threatening. Lose some yardage, though. It's second and goal to go back at the nine-yard line. Lauren Dean with a long count. Tommy a short drop, throwing into the corner, and it's going to be caught by Walker for the touchdown. He beat his defensive man, Tony Roper, that time, and Walker just went up in the air for the score, and the Bears have got their first touchdown in the game, and it is now five and six is 11. Lenore Ryan, 11. Elon, nothing. That's just a great play more by Scotty, who had, a, I guess you call it a slight adjustment pattern. He came back to the football defensive back, had his back turned, did not see where the ball was, and Scotty with an easy catch for the touchdown. That is so important, Jeff. It's going to force Elon maybe to get away from their game plan just a little bit. An impressive for Lenore Ryan. First drive of the second half, touchdown. Lenore Ryan will go for two points on the conversion. Lauren Dean, again, he's there, folks. He's behind the light pole. <laughs> as Tommy will roll right, looking. He may try to run now, going to go back the other way, and Elon's going to cover him for the two-point conversion will fail. Lenore Ryan still leads 11 to nothing. Timeout on the field, Lenore Ryan football 89, a presentation of Catawba Valley Cable Team. That's causing him the problem he's having momentarily. Elon really hasn't been able to put much pressure on Tommy. As Eccles and Hatley come in, Rex Harrison going out, and Rex was open there in the left part of the end zone and Tommy overthrew it. It is so tough to throw the football when it's so wet like that, especially after you've played, what, now about two hours. Greer, the only setback. Sideline, timing Whoa. pattern, incomplete. Intended over there for uh, Damon, incomplete. And the Elon defender that stepped in almost came up with an interception. That was uh, uh, Humbles on the play. He could have ran the Raleigh. Well, I think Virginia's that way. If he'd, have been, if he'd have made the catch, I think Virginia's in that direction. Well, he could have ran Raleigh, to Richmond. Raleigh's down that way. He could have ran to Richmond then. Juju said he didn't care what it was Virginia or Susan or who. <laughs> he could have got there. Bears will try a field goal. It'll be a 32-yard attempt from the left hash mark. Roof will hold. Mundy gets a good spot. The kick is on the way. It's long enough, and it is good. And... If your phone is always tied up, call waiting is the answer to never missing out on an important call at home. Well, third and about eight. Following the game, we will be naming our player of the game. Sponsored by Best of Beers, distributors of Budweiser in the Hickory area. And uh, we'll be checking that out following the game. The Budweiser star of the game. Third down and eight for Elon. Inch calling signal. Gonna drop back to throw. Deep over the middle, intercepted by Bratton, and he drops it. Let's see how they rule this. The ball is loose at about the eight yard line. It is going to be an interception. He fumbles it and he recovers it. Lenore Ryan comes up with the football. Second interception by Toby Bratton. He had one back at the Western Carolina game, and I think Toby got hurt, Jeff, after he caught that football and got hit, because he is down at the moment. And Elon's pass protection broke down a little bit. Bethard on that last pass turned in. He was wide open. The quarterback thought he turned out and he threw it right into Toby's hands. First big break of the game for the Bear defense. Check me, fellas, if I'm wrong. That's the first turnover of the football game. I'm not counting the snap punt as a turnover. That was just a mistake, but the Bears get a break and get it back. Elon was threatening and put together a pretty good ball control drive. Lauren Dean will start the Bears deep in their own territory at the eight yard line. Tommy will give it straight ahead to Sam Wells. Uh, Lenore Ryan looking at third and about uh, 11, 12 yards to go now. 4.45 to go in the football game. The Bears up 14-0. It is still raining rather steadily here at Memorial Stadium in Burlington. Like we say, it hasn't been pretty. You can tell that it's been muddy. Playing conditions not really suitable for much of anything today. Third and 11, Lauren Dean. Dropping, now rolling. He may try to run for the first down. Tommy's going to be over the 40, 
And he's got the first down over the 45 out to the 47 yard line. That's the second time today, Tom, that he's ran for first down. Tell you what, he's got the reputation of not being a very good runner, but uh, like I say, this second time today, and he didn't look too bad running that one. He picks his spots quite well. Now Tommy's got matching uh, sides of his uniform. Both sides are dirty. He's got a clean streak down the middle. No, Elon rolled the dice that time. They put about eight men on the line of scrimmage and said, if you're going to throw it, we're going to put pressure on you. There was nobody out there to cover Tommy. First and 10 at the Lenore Ryan 47 yard line. Greer struggling, breaks it an opening, fumbles it and got it back at the line of scrimmage, the 47 yard line. The Bears again flirting with disaster. They fumbled it a couple of times in this possession, but both times they've been able to come up with the bounce. There was a big hole there. Top play, they're going to give a partially dry football to replace the one that's wet. So 2.21 to go in the football game. And the Bears with a 14 to nothing lead appear to be in awfully good position to get their first, not only their first win of the season, their first sack eight win of the season. And Elon in danger of going four consecutive games without any points scored. There's a dandy kick by Mallard. Fair, no, he did not signal fair catch. Bethard at the 10 over the 15 out to the 17. And Elon is 80 three yards away from a chance to score with 2.03 to go in the football. It's going to be a happy group of folks that have made the trip down here from uh, the Catawba County area this afternoon. Not that many in attendance on either side because of the weather, I'm sure, but those that have come to back the Bears, they're going to have a very short trip back to the Catawba Valley area. And the Bears will be back on the road next week. They go to Boiling Springs to take on the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs, coached by one great guy, Woody Fish guy that whose name would have been appropriate for today <laughs> it's rain good enough to make a pond out here making the reception is Monroe Patterson and Patterson's out of bounds on the Lenore Rhine 47 yard line stopping the clock with 49 seconds to go one thing about Elon they are working the sidelines for those little short patterns very well Tom you think they'll welcome us open arms next week at Gardner Webb I don't know about you, Juju, but they will. Of course, you got an invitation to the golf tournament this year. Yeah, I got a preseason invitation to the golf tournament from the um, Gardner Webb football staff. So who knows? Maybe they'll roll out the red carpet for us. Yeah, you write a couple more articles and. Uh... Forty-seven yard <laughs> line. You boys, calm down. As in, with all day to throw, now may have to run it. Being pursued, throws deep down the sideline and overthrows Burnett as he almost ran into the place kick uh, pra uh, pa uh, practice thing down there. That could have been serious. 38 seconds to go in the game. They had a 30 second clock like they do in basketball to get the shot off. He'd have been in close to getting it. Getting down to the closing <laughs> second there. But the clock stopped on the incomplete pass and it's now second down and 10 yards to go for Elon at the Lenore Ryan 47 yard line. This has been a frustrating season for Lenore Ryan and perhaps the Bears have been able to take some frustration out on uh, Elon here this afternoon. They played just good enough to lose three football games. There's the pass that's been completed. Going to be close to first down yardage. David Barr made the reception inside the 40, down at about the 37 yard line. The clock moving along, 25 seconds. Going to be short of what they need for a first down. I thought Tom was going to sing for us. Now Elon will oh, take a timeout. We'll take a timeout also with 21 seconds to go. Lenorine football is a presentation of Catawba Valley Cable TV. Line 21 seconds away from posting a shutout for the first time since 1983. Elon looking at third and two at the bare 38 yard line. And Inge going to take a short drop. Now may roll out and try to throw. Now sets up back against the grain. Intercepted. That'll save the shutout. Picked off by Lenore Ryan's Bobby Page. Page with a little bit of running room will get over the 30 out to the 32 yard line. And there are only eight seconds to go in the football game. And ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has just left the stadium. I'm telling you right now, the Bears have got to be feeling good. For the first time since 1983, Lenore Ryan is going to record a shutout. And it's not only their first win of the season, it's the first time since 1979 that the Bears have won on this field in Burlington. And hallelujah, Hickory. Get them all out, you <laughs> two. <laughs> Eight seconds to go. Look for Lauren Dean just to fall on it <laughs> as the Bears are going to 
extend a streak for Elon, it's got to be their worst nightmare. This is four games in a row that Elon has not gotten a touchdown out of their offensive unit. As they've got to be wondering about themselves, there's the last second off the clock, and the Bears have done it. For the first time since 1983, Lenore Ryan records a shutout, and for the first time since 19. 79 the Bears have won in Burlington it's a final Lenore Ryan 14 Elon nothing Juju and Tom and I'll be back to wrap up this afternoon's coverage of Lenore Ryan football 89 on Catawba Valley cable TV as you can see the house is completely renovated with the very best heating and cooling system must be a Linux Hickory Sheet Metal has been providing expert installation and quality service for over 60 years. Call Hickory Sheet Metal today. At a boy, Dave. Hurricanes, the most... Storm and hurricane season. Tune in each day for the tropical update at 10 before the hour, only on the Weather Channel. Wellington Memorial Stadium, Lenore Ryan wins 14-0. First shutout since 1983 for Lenore Ryan College football team. One of the men responsible for that shutout is our Budweiser star of the game, senior linebacker Charlie Wallace out of Delmont, Pennsylvania. Wallace, 21 tackles this afternoon, including 16 solo tackles. Tom Watson with him. Tom, let's go to you. Charlie Wallace, fine football game. Uh, overall impressions of the game. Well, I just think it was an overall team effort, and, you know, coaches were on our butts all week to go out one down at a time and, you know, just give it our all. All right, are your impressions of, of your particular individual performance this afternoon? Uh, <laughs> I usually don't think about that too much. I'm just happy we came out with a win finally after three close games that, you know, we could have went either way. Do you feel like you played a better ball game this afternoon at, uh, against Elon than you did in the first three? Uh, individually, I think I did, but I think the... You know, the defense, you know, we finally came together. We got a lot of defense linemen that were injured. They came back. To, they helped us out a lot in the middle. Coach Farrington, a happy man this afternoon. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell us why. Well, ever since he's been here, I don't know, was it two, two years or three years, he's been wanting a shutout. We've been close about three or four games the past couple of years, but we finally got him one. LR's first shutout since 1983, I believe, if I remember what Juju said up in the booth earlier. And uh, an outstanding performance by Charlie Wallace. What's ahead next week going down to Bowling Springs? Well, I remember two years ago going down to Bowling Springs, we lost, what, 55 or 53 to 5. We got some, you know, revenge factor there. We got to show them that we can beat them on their own home field. Appreciate you consenting this interview. I know you got family and friends waiting for you. Appreciate it. Thank uh -huh. you very Thank much. You. The Best of Beers, Star of the Game, sponsored by Budweiser. For Taste so crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. Lenore Ryan's got a 14 0 victory, and it's the first time they've shut out anybody since 1983. Came again, skill for Jeff. Opening game of the season, Bears got a, a big break on the special teams. They blocked the kick against the Quakers back in 83 and went on to the victory. And a game ball has to go to LR defensive coordinator Jeff Farrington. Team played strong, inspired defense this afternoon. Of course, you saw Charlie Wallace, the defensive star of the game. 21 tackles, Tom. Uh, had a heck of a ball game. Several tackles uh, late in the ball game where uh, ball carriers stepped into the hole and he turned them around and sent them back out to the other side. And the key, pay, key play, perhaps a non-play, when Elon didn't get the playoff at the close of the first half. Elon's sputtering offense took over on about their own 17-yard line, marched down the field, had an excellent chance to score. Clock running out, no timeouts. They elected to go with a running play rather than possibly getting two passing plays off and of pass into the end zone uh, to give them a touchdown if they had completed it. Uh, interception would have stopped the clock and they would have had fourth down to go with another play and they did not get that fourth down play off. The clock stopped. So the Bears get a 14-0 victory. We go on the road next week to Gardner-Webb and who knows what's waiting down there. Coach Woody Fish and our friends down in Boiling Springs will be down there next Saturday afternoon on the radio side a week from Monday, Monday night. 
key sack a contest before the bears come back home homecoming but next week the bulldogs and the bears kick off from boiling springs spangler stadium two o'clock so for the first time since the mid 60s the bears have pulled off back-to-back -back victories over elon and they'll be trying to do the same thing against gardner webb next saturday when they take on uh, the bulldogs in spangler stadium We'll have the broadcast for you on Catawba Valley Cable TV. Until then, for Juju Phillips and Tom Watson, I'm Jeff Join. So long, everybody. <laughs>
at Moret Stadium tonight. We're just glad to be able to bring it to you on Catawba Valley Cable TV. You stay tuned. We'll have the kickoff of tonight's game shortly on Catawba Valley Cable TV. And to bring you tonight's play-by-play, -play, the voice of Lenore Ryan football, my partner, Jeff Joins. John Perry and Elliot Poss were teammates at Presbyterian College under Cali God. And now, again, their opposition coaches as the kickoff is very short. Randolph Bowers at the 23, over the 30, out to about the 33-yard line. And Lenore Ryan will have uh, first down yardage there as the Bears get to possession of the football first here tonight at Moret Stadium. It still takes a little bit of getting used to to say Moret Stadium. Certainly does, Jeff. In on the tackle that time was Brett Turner for Presbyterian. Again, Lauren Dean will be the quarterback. Bowers and Greer to tailbacks. Jones and Hatley will start at wide receiver. Gilmore, the tight end. We'll see Rex Harrison back in action, number 88 tonight. Mark it at the 34-yard line. First and 10 for the Bears. Out of the eye with a pair of receivers. They're going to pitch it back to Bowers. Good blocking at the point of attack. Over the 45. First down yardage out to the 49-yard line. And that's a good start for the Bear offensive line. Good yeah. block up inside by Greer that time. Yeah, Jeff, you notice, you and should you notice that PC is not kicking that ball deep even on the opening kickoff. They're not going to give Lamar Ryan chance to run that kickoff back when well, Ryan led the nation last year in uh, kickoff returns as the Bears get a first down rushing on the first play from scrimmage and mark it at the 48 yard line of the Bears first and 10 from there Lauren Dean with the eye backs behind him against the four-man defense in front of Presbyterian the Bowers again over the 50 into Presbyterian territory at about the uh, 47 yard line where it was Will Bettingfield that made the tackle he's been there uh, he played in the game last year, and he's just a sophomore, so he's played for two years now for PC at that position. This PC defense has had problems this year. They're giving up 45 and a half points a game, Jeff, and over 400 yards on the ground and through the air. Presbyterian, a very young football team. I think you heard Tom mention that a little earlier tonight. They are a young football team, especially on the defense. Lauren Dingo to option. We haven't seen much of that out of Tommy this year, and he gets it inside the 45 down to the 42-yard line, where it was Tyrone Lucas that made the tackle for Presbyterian. So the Bears looking at third and short yardage, third down about a yard at the Presbyterian 43-yard line. John Perry mentioned earlier in the week that Presbyterian would be one of the few teams that they play that is Lenore Ryan's size or smaller. They've always been smaller than most SAC 8 schools, but the thing that sets them apart, Tom and Jeff, as they are an extremely quick defensive football team. Lauren Dean will sneak it. He's got the first down yardage, and then he's met rather abruptly at about the 41-yard line, but the Bears will keep this possession alive with that first down run by Lauren Dean. It's the second first down of the game for the Bears as we're at the 13-10 mark. Mark Temple's made the tackle for PC that time. One of the things you'll notice about the PC defense is they play off the football. They have that four-man front. They have three linebackers patrolling the middle. It's kind of a read-and-react type defense. They don't try to win the line of scrimmage. They want to control and be quick off the line of scrimmage. John Cook, the sophomore out of uh, uh, South Rowan, has checked in for the Bears at fullback. And it looks like the Presbyterian may have jumped off sides on that first down play from the 41-yard line. As the officials move in and their officiating crew tonight assigned to the South Atlantic Conference has Tom Tooten as the referee, James Smith as the umpire, Sam Stevenson as the linesman, Reggie Kearns the line judge, Donald Henson the field judge, Robert Roberts is the uh, back judge, and Louis Cox is the clock operator. These people assigned here by the South Atlantic Conference, so it's first and five for the Bears at the Presbyterian 36-yard line. Lauren Dean going to pitch to Bowers. Gets a good block from Cook, and then PC covers him inside the 35 at about the 33-yard line. It was a linebacker, Mark Temples, that made the tackle for Presbyterian that time. Nose guard Tyrone Lucas, number 90, also helped on that tackle, coming in from the backside. Lewis, a nose guard, Jeff, originally a defensive tackle. They moved him around a little bit, and he's back at tackles, second on the team in total tackles with nine. Bowers off to a good start, has 20 yards on three carries so far. As Lauren Dean brings him up to the line of scrimmage on second and short at the 34-yard line. A little play action fake. Tommy throwing out of the backfield intended for uh, Greer, but Walter couldn't come up with it, and it's going to bring up third and short for Lenore Ryan. John Terrapin was the guy that was putting some pressure on Lauren Dean, and Tommy had to dump it out of there in a hurry and perhaps didn't get the type of throw that he was looking for. PC has had only two sacks this year on defense, and the Bears hoping to get better protection. That's a little play, Jeff, that hasn't worked that much this year, that little dump-off pass to the fullback out of the backfield. 
the Bears' timing hasn't been what it should be. So from the left hash mark, it's third and four for Lenore Ryan at the Presbyterian 34-yard line. Sam Wells is back in at tailback now. They're going to pitch to Sam, and he gets a good block on the corner. Then Presbyterian covers him well at about the 32-yard line, and the Bears may be looking at a fourth down decision. It's fourth and about a yard and a half for Lenore Ryan. Wayne Hampton, the safety, came up to make uh, part of the tackle that time for Presbyterian. Here's a decision now, Tom, for the Bears on fourth, and it may be a little too long for a field goal. Yeah, it looks like they're going for it. Comes a play in. Wells has been effective this year on that toss sweep and has picked up a number of third and fourth down situations, Jeff. Coming into the game, he's been the Bears' best rusher. Look for him again. Wells and Greer in the backfield. Jones and Walker are the wideouts. On fourth and short, Larndine with a naked bootleg. Tommy's got the first down inside the 30 out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Was that the play, Tom, or was that uh, something that he had lived that time? I believe it was the play. He had the, the receiver going straight down the field as if it were going to be a pass play. I don't think he wanted to run it, but uh, the receiver was covered one-on-one -on -one down the sideline. Well, whether it was the player it won, it certainly worked for the Bears. Another first down. Mark it at the 27-yard line of Presbyterian, and Lenore Ryan with a good drive here on their first possession of the night after taking the opening kickoff. Bowers back in at tailback. Greer right in front of him, and here goes Bowers right behind Greer. Inside the 25, driving those legs to about the 23-yard line. And the Bears continuing to get good yardage on the ground. For Randolph now, four carries, and he's at 25 yards on the evening. One of the stats, Jeff, you may remember from last year that we got is Lenore Ryan had played years, 9, 10, 12 years, without getting over 100 yards on the ground against the PC defense. I think they did so last year, and they won the football game. That might be a key tonight. That was a key. Of course, the big play, that big key in that game last year was the interception that was returned by Marcus Wall for 70-some yards that uh, provided the Bears with the impetus to win the game. Here's second at about seven. Lauren Dean with four receivers. Has plenty of time over the middle. Going to be caught. Making the reception for Lenore Ryan is Rex Harrison making his first catch of the season. Rex has been out of the lineup for a couple of games. We talked about that, that in the pregame show, and it's good for Lauren Dean to have his roommate back in there. That's his first catch of the night, and Tommy's been a little hesitant throwing to the tight end. Rex just came off the line of scrimmage, did a little curl pattern across the middle in the open part of the zone, and Tommy hit him. Inside the 15 at the 13-yard line, and another Lenore Ryan first down as the Bears look crisp and sharp on this first possession. Here's Wells, got a good block from Greer. 10, 5, out of bounds at the 2-yard line. Jeff Jody Hatley, a flanker, or number 5, outstanding block down there one-on-one -on -one in the open field. And the Bears are looking at first and goal to go from the two-yard line. It's not that you have to knock somebody off your feet as a wide receiver. It's called a shade block almost, where you just block the man from getting to the running back. And a good cut that time by Wells, who just tippy-toed down the sidelines and picked up another first down. Wells with 12 yards on three carries. Or excuse me, let me, let me looking at that backwards. This is Bowers to the one-yard line, almost into the end zone. It's going to be second and goal to go for Lenore Ryan. Let us tell the fans that last year between these two teams, the Bears were the team that scored first, and they went on to win the football game. Lenore Ryan, when they score first, seemed to have, while the percentage a lot higher, of winning football games. I think last year, Tom, seven or eight times they scored first, and they won eight football games. The Bears have had five first downs in this possession. Right now, they're looking at second and goal to go from the one-yard line. Everybody in tight. Lauren Dean puts Walker in motion to the wide side. And they run back to the short side. Wells trying to wedge it in there, and PC's there to stop him before he got it into the end zone. He had a hole there for a moment, and then the seam all of a sudden closed up. Quickness. Their quickness, especially up front, they're not very big. They average, oh, about 230 pounds, 225 pounds along the defensive front, but they're awfully quick, Tom. Yeah, they closed that hole. Like Jeff said, it was there, and when he made his decision to cut up into there before he could get to the line of scrimmage, they had closed it up and were there, there to meet him. The Bears two of three in third down conversions in this possession, and they've had it for almost half of the first quarter. Eight minutes and 50 seconds to go as Lauren Dean on third and goal from the one-yard line. Going to give it to Bowers. Over the top. Touchdown. Lauren Dean. Did Tommy keep it? Well, they faked me out. I thought Bowers went for the dive over the top. It is Lauren Dean for the touchdown. Thanks, Tom, and the Bears are on top 6-0. Eight minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Lenore Ryan with a beautiful drive. Gets it right down the field. 
as they keep it uh, exclusively on the ground except for one passing play as they cover the 66 yards in 14 plays. Jeff, you weren't by yourself. The interior line, the two linebackers went for him also. There's the spot and the kick on the way by the freshman Monday is good and Lenoreine has a 7-0 lead. Timeout on the field, Lenoreine Football 89 is a presentation of Catawba Valley Cable TV. Tonight. And again, let's mention that Parsley second in the nation coming into tonight, averaging 146 and a half yards on the ground. He's a little bit off of his pace right now, but that could happen, uh, could change at any time. Here's Nichols going to option to Parsley. He's got running room this time, and it's changing right now. Midfield, he's in the open. Only one man can catch him, and will as Parsley's down inside the bare 30 at the 26-yard line. Defensively, for Lenore Ryan, Ike Oglesby saved the touchdown. Oh, my. Tom, we talk about having him bottled up, and all of a sudden, there he goes. You know, Tracy Coulter, during the first half, he let the uh, quarterback sneak up inside of him one time, and he was hitting himself on the helmet. That time, he took the quarterback, and just as soon as he took him, he made the, made the pitch. He doubled his yardage on one play. He had 49 yards on 11 carries. He got 52 yards on that last run. He now has 101 on 12 carries. Presbyterian at the bear 26 yard line. Parsley getting the blows. They put uh, Brinson at the tailback position and he gets inside the uh, 25 to the 24 yard line. That was the best play probably PC has run tonight besides that screen pass for the long touchdown. That The option cleared out so well, Tom. The blocks came about the same time and the hole just parted. And what a run by Parsley. Who he can cut back. He's awfully quick and He's one of those kind of instinctive runners that looks for the hole and cuts back and forgets his blocker sometimes. He's back in at the tailback, and Brinson moves into the fullback slot now to spell Smalls for a moment. Second and eight for Presbyterian at the 24. Nichols will keep it himself inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. And the Presbyterian offense beginning to click here in the third quarter. The Bears' Sean Wagner makes the tackle. And Tom, the Bears have been outscored 14-3 to in the third quarter on the season. It's the third quarter that's really hurt Lenore and they played even the other three. Well, you know, we may mention uh, sometime first half that uh, they were slow getting off in the third quarter and the first series of downs is going to be a very important series of downs for this ball game. Here's third and a yard for PC now at the 17 yard line. Nichols will give to the money man and he's got the first down and more inside the 15 down to the 10 yard line and a Presbyterian first down. It just depends on which side of the 10-yard line they spot it, whether it's going to be first and 10 or first and goal. And it looks like it's first and goal. They're just attacking that bare defense, and a little change we mentioned. Ben Fouts, normally the starter defensive end, is out. And again, Coulter, number 45, is in. But right now, PC saying, we're coming right at you guys. You try to stop us. They can get a first down by about two inches short of the goal line. Here's the pitch to Parsley, cut it up. He's to the six and dropped by the Bear defense at that point. Good coverage by Wagner once again, the safety, and Hegler, the defensive end. The PC moving the ball very sharply has started this possession at their own 19. And now Parsley on the night, 124 yards on 14 carries. Uh, Jeff, Todd Hagler's back at the nose guard position, so they've got Tracy Coulter, a freshman, at one defensive end. Number 84. And Fouts has been put back in there. Mark it at the six-yard line. Second down for Presbyterian. Nichols will option it back to Parsley. That was Fouts. almost a forward lateral. Ben Fouts makes the defensive play as he got some help from Oglesby that time. And the Baron defense trying to rise to the occasion. They stopped Wofford down there last week. Perhaps they can do it against PC tonight. They got good penetration that time, and the Blue Hoes decided to go on the short side of the field. They've been successful on this drive coming on the far side of the field, and again, a third down situation. Jeff, you have to be surprised if they don't go to Parsley. Presbyterian, two of six in third down conversion, as Nichols will give it straight ahead. Parsley, there's Hagler and a couple of other Bears that stuff him at about the three, perhaps the two-yard line. PC's offensive line, you had to have a feeling they were going to the left side that time because they were took, taking some large line splits over there to try to get some room. Tom, would they even think about field goal here? I doubt it. If they don't convert? 
Well, they've, they've got to score two touchdowns somewhere along the way. Fourth, and you might as well say goal to go from the just at the two-yard line, and they're going for it. Well, you've got two shots here. You can pick up a first down or a touchdown. Well, it's gut check time on the Bear defensive front. Everybody in tight for PC, and now they send Reddick back in motion to the line. And Nichols going to throw on fourth and two under pressure. Hagler's got him into the end zone. Incomplete. No, they call it a touchdown. 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 Wait a minute. The ball's on the side of the field. One official signaling touchdown, and it is a Presbyterian touchdown. The ball was laying on the side of the field over towards the brick wall. PC gets a break. I can't tell you who caught it because I didn't see anybody catch it. it but is it is a touchdown Presbyterian. In between the bricks down uh, at the gymnasium end, PC comes up with a break on fourth and two. And now it's a 22 to 13. Who well, we why did not the whistle to? blow? The quarterback was in the grass. It was no, it's not pro football, but his his forward.